everyone thanks for joining me today we're going to be having a bit of a beginner's drawing lesson I was asked a little while ago about shading um, and shadows so I thought we'd talk a little bit about them and doing something very simple like this onion now of course you don't have to do an onion but when it's a sphere it's a good practice so an apple a pepper or a lemon anything like that that you've got high around the house um, that you can pop in front of you now will be a good thing to practice on and then as you're practicing your drawing because like I said in previous videos you need to keep practicing your sketching and um, after you've done one object and you're happy with it then make a little group so get maybe an onion and some tomatoes and things and make a little kitchen scene and just gradually build up and do more and more objects but what I want you to do perhaps first we'll have a look at this book in a moment um, Obviously I've got this onion here for me to look at and if, I'm hoping the camera's going to pick this up but I've got a big window off to the right here, there's another big window to the left and behind me I've got a daylight bulb and above me I've got the ceiling lights. So wherever you're at, whether you're outside or inside, you're always going to have more than one light source um, unless you, you know, you're know, you in, in a room which, which is you've got no lights on and there's just the window. Um, you know you can you can orchestrate it so that you've got one light source but usually when you're just sketching you're going to have more than one light source so what I want you to perhaps have a go at to do now is you could pause the video to do this as well is wherever you're sitting at the moment just have a look around the room and focus on one very simple object and just stop and have a look at the amount of shadows on that object and the colour of those shadows so if you look here we've got a shadow there that's obviously from that window there's a shadow here which is probably from above and then there's another one back here which is from the light below behind there so and they're not all the same strength so that's another thing you need to look at putting a white piece of paper or a white tablecloth or something down to put your objects on is also a good idea because if you just put it on the table you've got the distraction of the colour of the wood and the grain in the wood and things like that as well so having it there with the white you can get those shadows and see them quite easily so when I talk about colour when you're looking around your room this is quite different because it's a white piece of paper but wherever the shadow is cast um, I don't know if you can see this mug again that's white but there's a shadow on the table so this shadow on the table from the mug is quite different to the shadow here because we've still got the colour of the table underneath so don't be thinking oh it's grey it's black it isn't look properly and think about the colours again it's all about observation we've talked about this before but you need to look and really look at the colour that colour compared to the colour next to it um, so the object doesn't change colour, the table hasn't changed colour, it's still the same table, it's just that it's got this cast shadow, so that it's a different tone to this here. So just think about that when you're looking at whichever object you're looking at in your room now, look at the different directions, the number of shadows, the, you know, the light sources and the colour and have a good think about it and make some notes of what you're seeing, but really observe, use your eyes, don't assume that you know the colours. Okay, so back to this book. This is um, John Ruskin, The Elements of Drawing, and I really like this. Um, and it's, you know, there's all sorts of different il illustrations in here, but that he uses um, as reference. And it just gives you an idea how you can get, um, by using different lines, how you can really build up a picture and get the, the depth of the shadows in there. So the problem that we're faced as artists, uh, or when you come to do a drawing, is that we're trying to put a 3D object onto a 2D surface. So you've got your 2D flat paper, but you want whatever you're drawing to appear to be 3D. So that's an obstacle that we're always trying to overcome. So we can do that by getting a good contrast. Um, contrast is something you should always be trying to get in your paintings. So we're talking there about the very lightest tones down to the very darkest. So if you look in this picture here, you know, you've got some very, very dark tones in here where there's no light getting in between those rocks to it's obviously a very, very sunny day where it's, the sky's completely white and the tops of these trees are almost white. Uh, some of them almost disappearing into the sky and these buildings back here are almost disappearing because it's obviously a very, very sunny day. So we've got that big contrast between going very black to very white and then all these tones in between and the tones in between, so the trees here, 
these tones, we call these mid-tones, and of course there isn't just one mid-tone, it's a, a gradual thing, it's, it's a gradation. So we've got, you know, everything in between the darkest dark, which you'll hear me refer to quite often, and the lightest light is what we refer to as a mid-tone. Now to make quite a dramatic picture, if you put your darkest dark next to your lightest light, as those two rocks there, so this rock's obviously got the sunshine on it, and again with the tree here, we've got a very dark shadow under here, cast by this tree onto this one, and very white here where the sun's shining on that. Um, putting those two things together, the very darkest and the very lightest, without any mid-tones in between, gives a very dramatic picture. Um, again, so it gives us that real feeling of a midsummer, hot sunny day, even though it's all just done in black and white. And we'll look one or two more. And the other thing I was going to talk about, and I'll do this in a minute with this onion, is to you. A part of getting something 3D is to use your pencil and use your lines to get the shape of the object. So you're probably not better to see on the from the this distance on the camera. But this little barn roof is hay, um, and if you can imagine a thatch roof, they sort of curl around at the edge. So where it's coming around, there's a shadow cast there. But the lines of the pencil are going in the line of the actual barn itself round the, the roof to reinforce that shape. So I'll pop that to one side. If you do ever get a chance to read this book, it's a fabulous one to have. Um, I think I probably picked it up somewhere second hand. But um, yeah, so the elements of drawing, it's a great one to have. So I'll pop that to one side. So I'll probably show you both in the pen and in the pencil. I'm not going to do a complete drawing. It was just to give you make you look really and have a think about it and then get your own object to draw. So you'll hear us talk about linear drawings and tonal drawings and usually most people do a combination of the two. Some people are very linear um, and some people work more tonally. So if you're not familiar with those terms, what we're talking about when we're talking about a linear drawing is if you just set off and draw in a solid line. So with this onion, you'll be drawing, you know, a solid line of the shape of the onion. And then to do your shadows and things, let's put the, and this isn't going to be perfect because it's, you know, it's a rush job, but you can see you've got those very distinct lines. And this is a type of thing, you know, you'd see in illustrations where you've got, got a line there. And your shadows, you may do them using cross hatching. So you have shadows on the table as well, and you may, you know, use lines to fill in those shadows. But with a tonal drawing, you would have your, you would start and use the side of your pencil to put your shadows in. And gradually build up your shadows and have them going darker and darker. And obviously carefully observing where the light's hitting and where it isn't. And obviously where your, your lightest shadow is, um, sorry, your lightest tone is, if you can see your highlights on the top there, you would leave the white of the paper in this instance. Um, you could quite often put it back in with chalk or something like that if you've lost your highlights. So that's more of a tonal study and that's more of what we call a linear drawing. So when I use those two terms in other videos, that's what we're talking about. But most people, like I say, would use a combination of the two. So I would probably start by doing the outline of the onion. And I use quite short strokes on my, with my pencil. Um, it's easier to get a more accurate shape than if you try and set off and do it all in one line like that. Okay. So then keep looking at your object and looking at where the, the shadows are. Now I'm aware the pencil doesn't show up much on the video, so I would just now switch to my pen. So I would start off by, again you'd be doing this in pencil or charcoal so that you can rub it out. Start off by getting a basic shape in, just getting that bit of peel that's going down there. You perhaps won't see all the detail that I'm seeing because you're at a different, slightly different angle to me. Try and get some of those 
shapes of the top there where it's um, quite papery, isn't it? So you're doing a combination of actually drawing the onion and the shapes that are there and then starting and building the shadow upon it. So for me, the darkest shadows are under there and obviously the highlights are up here. So you would leave this white and gradually just build some of those shadows here where it's casting a shadow on itself. Can you see as I'm doing it, and I'm thinking about this shadow down this side now, again, you might not see that in shade because you're looking at a different angle to me. But imagine that you're moving your pen around the onion. So as you're drawing here, imagine that you're going around there. So you're not drawing straight line that way or a straight line that way. You're drawing, get your whole arm moving from your shoulder and draw around the object. more than one shadow on the table and again those are round shapes so use your arm and move around and where they're overlapping they're going to be darker because you've got three shadows on top of each other and obviously you're doing this if you were doing this in pencil as you go along you can sharpen the sharpen the whole image up rub out some lines you don't like, reinforce some other lines that you do like. Again, get some of those nice darks in where it's casting shadows on itself. And just keep building up and building up and keep looking, that's the main thing, keep looking back. So now I'm looking back, I can see a big shadow over here. Just gradually keep building it up. I'm just thinking this perhaps didn't show up much for you. So really when we're talking about cross hatching, I mean I'm sure you all remember this from school. Um, one way of doing shadows is to fill your paper like this. Another way some people like to do dots or some people just like to actually shade like this. And again you can go in both directions to get darker and then darker again. Like I say, use your when you're um, sharpening your pencil, use a knife. Don't use a pencil sharpener. Pencil sharpeners aren't brilliant for your pencils. Use a knife and try and get a nice long piece of lead there, so that you can really lie your pencil down on the side and cover a large area of paper. And again, move your paper around and move your arm around to where it's comfortable. Don't be trying to get in awkward positions to go around things. If it's awkward, move your paper around and move your pencil around. So you can see there how you can soon cover a large area, but go in the direction of the object. And we'll just go back to this a minute because there was quite a lot of cross hatching in some of these. So if we look at these, um, this chap here, again his hat, this is all, all the shadow under his hat because obviously this floppy bit of his hat is in the shade and um, this part of his hat's catching the light and this underneath is in the shade. But to get this shape of cloth cap I would think, um, there's a lot of cross hatching. Again it may, you might not be able to see it but this is all cross hatched under here but then here it's going up in lines to get that shape and all the lines of the cross hatching are going in the direction of the hat to get that shape of the cloth folding around and the same down here and it, the reason it's going darker and darker is because it's built up so we set off with some cross hatching here that's quite open this is closer together and then more layered on top to get darker and darker where these folds in the cloth are but all going in the direction of the cloth so I hope that all made sense to you um, if it didn't, just pop it in the comments below and I'll try and come back to some of that. Um, 
but really the main things to remember is try and get your arm moving and try and get all your shadows going in the direction of the object, around the object, um, to build up that 3D and get a big contrast between your lightest lights and your darkest darks and just keep having a go. So, like I say, have a look at an object in front of you now, study it for a little while and then maybe have a go at sketching it with all the highlights and the darkest shadows being the things that you're really concentrating on. And one tip is to half close your eyes. So to sort of squint at something, let your eyes sort of tiny glaze over a little bit and the contrast between the lightest and the darkest areas will really jump out at you then. So one thing you can do if you've got a smartphone with you is to take a, a picture of the uh, object in front of you and then convert it to black and white and that way all your highlights and shadows will show up a lot more. So I'll take a couple of pictures of this onion and I will put that in black and white as well and you can see what I mean, how it's much easier when you've not got the distraction of the colour to see those um, shadows and highlights. So I would suggest as beginners, although we like using colour, have a go, keep having a go with either pencil or charcoal or a black ink at drawing everyday objects in front of you and getting those shadows in. And then we'll come back another day and think about what colours we might use for the onion. But at the moment, try not to confuse the colours with the tone. So convert it into black and white and you will see what I mean. Where you, when you've not got that colour there to confuse you, it's much easier to see the difference between the lightest and the darkest. Okay, so I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Like I say, we'll come back another day and do this in watercolour and talk about the colours that we might use for shadows. Um, and I look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks for watching and bye for now.